I don't know about you, but I feel like, amen, that we're in revival time. Somebody says, you know, I, 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 I believe God's going to do this and this and this. And, and, and you know, we're going to have this great move of the Spirit of God and all this kind of thing. I, I wish it were true, but I, I promise you one thing. Amen, that right now, Brother Darrell, we're in the middle of a revival. A lot of folks are not participating in this revival. A lot of churches are not experiencing revival. But does it change God? It don't. Does it change His Word? Does it change His Spirit? The, move, the moving of the Holy Ghost? Does it affect it at all? No, it doesn't. If we want revival, and I feel, you know, God moving in a special way, amen, in, 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 in today, today, I feel like He's moving a, in a special way. And if we want to participate in it, if we want to receive all that we can have in the Lord, and I challenge you this morning, God wants you to do a little more than you've ever done before. He wants you on your knees more than you've ever been on your knees before. He wants you in His Word more than you've ever been in His Word. In such a time as this, brothers and sisters, Amen. God is saying, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. He said, your sons and your daughters would prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Upon your servants, upon your handmaidens, will I pour out of my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. How many here this morning believe that we're living in the last days? Turn around somebody sitting beside of you and tell them time is winding up. It seems like our lives is based on, on time. Everything that we do revolves around it. We're in a hurry to go anywhere, everywhere. Seem like, amen, we get up and we get on our feet and it's, it's a race from that point on. Hurry, hurry and get ready. Hurry and go to work. We go to work, we got to get this done, that done, that done. The time is ticking, amen. We've got to get everything fulfilled and taken care of before we walk out the door that day. We're in a constant race. We're in a hurry to get out off from work. We're in a hurry to get home. At home, we're in a hurry to get in the bed. Amen. It just seems like everything revolves around time, and it seems like time is winding up all around us. In the spirit, though, amen, let me say in the spirit, the spiritual clock of God is ticking. The spiritual clock of God is ticking and time is winding up, brothers and sisters. Time is winding up. We're in a race for our lives. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? You are in a race for your life. And time is quickly coming to an end. No doubt in my mind that the Lord could very well come before that we dismiss this service this morning. How many believe that? But until then, until the Lord calls us home, we must be about our Father's business and realize that time is winding up. We get in a hurry for everything but the right thing. Shout it on the housetop. Amen. The old song, there's an old song that talk it on the phone. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do whatever you've got to do and realize that God wants His church, amen, today. Glory to God to step out and do more for Him today as we see the time approaching, amen. You search the scriptures and you'll find, amen, that time is winding up. Time is coming to a close. And the angels of God, I feel in my spirit what I saw Sunday night was an angel of the Lord. There's no doubt in my mind that what I saw wasn't an angel. Amen. And time is winding up. I feel the angels of the Lord being sent. You know, amen, when, when Jacob, he saw the ladder going up for heaven, he saw the angels of the Lord ascending and descending. 
Hallelujah. God was saying, amen, that he's ministering, and Brother Dickie talking about it just a few moments ago, that there are ministering angels in this service this morning. You may not be aware of them. You may not be aware of what, is, what, what truly is happening in, in the spiritual world. You may not be aware, amen, that this church is full of ministering angels this morning. And you know why they're here? Amen, they're not here to receive glory themselves. But they're here, they've been sent from our Heavenly Father to minister to you and I, amen. How, how many know that this morning? They have been sent from heaven to minister to us, to our needs, amen. Hallelujah, to carry, amen, to help carry the message of the Word of God into our hearts by the Spirit of the Lord. God began to show me some things. And turn with me, if you will, this morning to the book of Isaiah. Kind of getting a little ahead of myself. The book of Isaiah. We are so happy to see every one of our visitors here this morning. We got a lot of church folks out. We need to be praying for them. Look around the church. Kind of get somebody in your mind that's not here this morning. Take them upon your heart this week and pray for them. Hallelujah. Isaiah 44, in verse number 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb. How many knows? Amen. That before we were born, God knew who we was. He knew who I was. He knew, amen, everything that I would do or wouldn't do. He knew, amen, from, from, from before that I was in my mother's womb, there was a call in my life. I believe that with all my heart. Just the same with you this morning. You may not all be ministers or preachers, but before that you were ever, amen, placed in your mother's womb, he knew you, he called you. You are ordained of God this morning. You have been called out of this world of darkness and into his marvelous light. You have a call on the depths of the inside of you. Many of you sitting here this morning, not even aware of it. Maybe there are areas of ministry that God wants to take us in this morning that we don't even know about right at the present time. But you see, God has a plan. And that plan He has ordained in our, our lives, hallelujah, He knows whether we'll do it or not, but still, nevertheless, the call of God is still there. The choice is still ours. You see, we can choose to do something or not to do it. We can choose, amen, to serve God. We can choose to love Him with all of our heart. We can choose to render our members, our body, over unto the Lord. Or else we can choose not to do so. He's given that power to us. But you see, I can't help but think that there would be any greater thing than to be a minister of a gospel which we all can be. A minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I can't begin to think of any greater feeling, Michelle, than what you were feeling when you were standing right behind this pulpit just a few minutes ago. That can't be compared to anything else. When the power of God comes into our lives and oh how that he can reach down and touch you in places that you didn't even know existed on the inside of you. That he can reach down and move and stir on the depths of your soul in such a manner that you never experienced before. You see, that's what the world is in need of today. That we can open ourselves up to the Lord. That we can come into his presence and say, Lord, get a hold of me. I preached it last week to you. Get a hold of me, Lord, and anything that's not like me or, or like you. Anything that's not like you, any hatred, malice, strife, jealousy, anything that's not like you, reach down, Lord, and pull it out of me. God gave that to me. How that we're in such a dire need, amen, to come into his presence 
and humble ourselves down and say, Jesus, not my will, but your will. Not the way that I think things should go, but the way that you know that they should go. Hallelujah, because there is a call and recognize this morning that there is a call in your life. Hallelujah. There is a call in your life this morning. Glory to God and say, Father, whatever it is, use me for your glory. He'll never call you to do anything that you're not capable of doing. He'll never send you into the battlefield, amen, and, and send you unprepared. Glory. But when he sends you somewhere, he will give you the weapons that you need to face the battles that you'll be coming against. To face your enemy. He'll give you the wisdom to overcome. He'll give you the power to succeed. In the name of Jesus. I think sometimes, amen, we, we fail to understand, you know, that, well, you know, God has called me to do this, or I feel like I need to be doing that. And, and we put restrictions and limitations upon ourselves. Hallelujah. God given us talent and and we, we, we hinder our own selves by putting these restrictions upon us. But you see, God, hallelujah, He is looking for people who will say there is no restrictions or limitations to God. The heaven is His throne and the earth is His footstool. There are no limitations with God and let me say, there are no limitations with you this morning. The call of God, the power of God can shake this world that you possess. The power of God can cause you to turn this world upside down when we yield ourselves to Him. Amen? Hallelujah. I love this scripture. He says, I yet, yet, uh, yet no, now hear, O Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen, thus saith of the Lord that made and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeserun, whom I have chosen. Verse number three. For I will pour water. Everybody say water. How many knows how precious is water? It will take only a few days without it. And you'll end up in a hospital. And then add a couple more days to that. And you'll end up in the ground. How precious is water? I began to read this scripture last night. And I began to think about rain and water. And what, what it means. And what God's trying to say to us. How important. He's referring to water as the spirit. Water being the Spirit. How important is it for us? How essential and, 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 and no doubt the reason that he compares water to the Spirit is, is how much that we need it. Something as simple as water. You see, water is a purifier. When you go to the bathroom, you wash your hands with soap and you use water. It is part of the cleansing process that we have to go through. How many times is church people today, amen, they, 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 they're trying to sanctify themselves. They try, amen, to wrestle against addictions and they wrestle against problems and they wrestle against all kinds of situations in their life. But truly, they can never truly experience the cleansing process of the Lord without applying the Spirit of God to their hearts. It takes the Spirit. It takes the Spirit of God to cleanse us. The cleansing of the washing of the water by the Word. The Spirit of the Lord to cleanse us. To purify us. To get rid of everything that's not like God. We come before Him this morning. We say cleanse us Lord. Cleanse our hearts. Wash our hands. Hallelujah. Make us whole. Make us pure. Make us a holy vessel unto the Lord. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. 
You see, I, I, I begin to think about this water, this, this comparison to the Spirit. Water purifies. Water cleanses. How many knows that water brings life? You can take a plant that's on the verge of death, ready to dry up and die, and add just a little water to it, and it causes it to recover. Are you hungry and thirsty for the Spirit this morning? Do you crave Him like a man craves water that's wandering in the desert? Do you crave His Spirit? Do you crave to be in His presence? A lot of folks today, amen, they just don't, they just don't get it. A lot of folks today, amen, they come to church occasionally because it's the thing that we should do. So we, we do it occasionally on special events. They come to church occasionally, amen. They, they, they pray occasionally, occasionally. They'll pick up the Bible and they'll read it because they know it's the thing that they should do. So we do it. But God doesn't want it to be that way. He wants you to crave Him. Hallelujah. He wants you to thirst for His Spirit. He wants you, amen, to be and have the kind of attitude that says, I can't wait till Sunday morning when we come to the house of God and I lift my hands up and I can feel the Spirit of God running up and down the avenues of my soul. He wants you to crave Him this morning. He wants you to be thirsty for Him. Excited and so enthused about Him that you just can't put the Bible down that you've got to read and you've got to find out more and more about this man called Jesus. That you've got to find out more about the healing stripes, amen, that was applied. That you've got to find out more about how to overcome and how to live a successful life and how to be blessed, amen. There are 1,600 promises in the Word of God and He wants, to, you, he wants you to know them all. All of them. He wants you to understand, amen, why, why, amen, what it means to be full of a spirit. You know, we claim, we Pentecostal people claim to be spirit-filled Christians. But how many of us are? How many of us are truly spirit-filled? Uh, we got a little, little bit in our, in, our, in, our, in our spiritual glasses. Some of us say, man, the water went away a long time ago. We, might, we may have one time had a full cup. We may at one time had a full cup. But time, trouble, chaos, aggravation, temptation, trials, tribulations came and slowly the Spirit of God began to run out. I think it's in Isaiah he talks about, amen, that they would make themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that would hold no water. In other words, amen, a sister. And I went to Mexico and I actually got to see what one was. I never, it's kind of like a, like a horse trough that's filled with water. When it rains, amen, they, they pipe that water into that, into that cistern and, and then they keep it covered. Hallelujah. And it was just like a big square box is what, what it was. And, and they filled that up. And the Bible said that they made themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that had cracks in it that would hold no water. Slowly, the water would begin to leak out. You hear what I'm saying this morning? Amen. The devil wants to steal the Spirit of God from you. He wants to drain you. He wants you to be empty. He don't want your cup to be full this morning. Amen. He don't want you to, uh, to allow, amen, the Spirit of God, the water of the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God to begin to purify you or cleanse you. Amen. But he wants you to experience, some, amen, chaos and, and trouble and, and all of these other things that we have in this world. Amen. But when we're full of the Spirit of God, you see the water... I love this one. Water, how many knows water produces energy? Water produces energy. Produces power. Power. 
when the church is full of the Spirit, then the church will begin to produce power. Power. I will cause rain to fall upon them that are thirsty upon the dry grounds. Them that desire it. The churches that want it. The people that's crying out for it. Are we truly crying out for a move of God? Are you truly crying out, amen, for the Spirit of God to sweep inside of you? Are you truly crying out for your loved ones? Hey Amen. I feel like we failed in so many different ways. I feel like we come short in so many different areas. Hallelujah. And I feel that it's time that we recognize our failures and say enough is enough. I've come to the place to where I need and thirst and want the Spirit of God to fill me completely up to the brim. Amen. To cause my cup, as David said, to run over. To put me in a position, amen, to where I truly am a Spirit-filled person. I believe that God is saying to us that we have to understand that we need His Spirit operating in our lives. And sweet water and bitter water will not flow out of the same fountain. You've got to be in or you're out. There are no straddling the fences. You're either saved or you're lost. You'll either go to heaven or you'll go to hell. There's no in between. I want to be in a position to when the Lord calls me out. Amen. Hallelujah. That, as John said in the book of Revelation, even so come Lord Jesus. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm spirit filled. I struggle. There's a lot of trials that I've got to face. There's a lot of disappointments that I have. There are a lot of things that I struggle with. But thank God, the Spirit's still there. The Spirit's still there. Many of us, we, 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 we might not be able to say that. Some of us this morning might say the Spirit was once there, but it's no longer there. God wants you to be in a position this morning to where the Spirit of God is overflowing in your life. He wants that Spirit, that water, that rain to wash away. Amen. Glory to God. All the things that's not like the Lord. He wants you to understand truly what the Spirit of God means. Having it what it means. Amen. Producing the power operating in the gifts of the Spirit of God. Moving as the Spirit causes you to move. And understanding, amen, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Amen. These tsunamis that hit these places, there's absolutely nothing that can stop them. When they move in, all the force of that great water, that great ocean that moves in upon the land, it don't matter what it is, it's tore down. You understand what I'm saying this morning? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord would lift up a standard against him. When the enemies of, your, of, of, of life have moved in and encamped of around about you. Maybe people hurt you, talked about you, scandalized your name. Maybe people have, have mocked you and ridiculed you. Maybe you've been hurt in, in such, a, such a great way. Hallelujah. Don't you know it doesn't matter? Because the Bible said, if God be for us, who can be against us? The Spirit of God moving in like a tsunami. Amen. Oh, glory to God, and there's nothing that the devil can do about it. Are you glad for that this morning? Are you glad, hallelujah, that there's no obstacle, there's no enemy that can withstand the power of the move of God? If you don't believe it, read about what happened to Pharaoh. That's right. If you don't believe it, pick up the Bible and begin to search the scriptures, all the enemies of God in the Old Testament, in the book of Joshua alone, 31 times they fought the battles, amen, and God gave them the victory. 
The only time they lost is when they allowed sin to come into their camp. God will cause you to have the victory against your enemies. David went out, hey man, he would not heed it. It wasn't the stone. Amen, hallelujah. It wasn't the stone that killed Goliath. Hallelujah, it was the anointing of God. It was the fact that this giant was standing against the power of God. Amen, you can't withstand the power of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. You can't curse what God has blessed. Amen. Hallelujah, and I don't care what kind of a giant marches out against you. I don't care how big, how ugly that he is. Amen, there's no power that can tear down the anointed people of God. We are greater this morning. You are greater this morning than all the powers of your enemies. Amen, because God, amen, through the Holy Ghost is living on the inside of you. Amen, you don't have to be bullied and pushed around into a corner. You don't have to take whatever the devil decides to do shout on you. Amen. But you can arise up as people of God full of the Spirit of God. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And say greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Glory. He wants to move you this morning. He wants to shake you this morning. He wants to fill you this morning. He wants to purify you this morning. Hallelujah. To that cross on Calvary And he hung there And he died to set the sinner free He shed his precious blood To save a sinner like me But praise be to God He's coming again He's coming again He's coming again When that trumpet sounds, the saints are gonna leave the 